Okay, so we are going to discuss about event monitoring. So what is event monitoring? Meaning we can track or trace what has been done on our Salesforce org. Like for example, you want to track who log in, who log out, and web clicks on the Salesforce Classic platform or on the Lightning platform, web clicks, performance, even errors, and a mobile app as well. Visual Force page loads. We haven't played with Visual Force. I don't think we will, but if you go on with me all the way to developer um, courses like developer beginner, intermediate, and advanced. You will play around with Visual Force. API calls can be tracked as well. Apex executions also report exports. For example, um, you want to restrict anyone or any staff to export too much data out of your Salesforce organization. For example, somebody is wanting to steal data or trying to sell your organization's data. So you can trace everything. Oh, somebody is trying, is trying, but you're not allowing them to. Somebody is trying to export or steal data. Oh, somebody is logging in from a whole different part of the world. We don't have staff outside of this country. Who might that be? And stuff like that to be a detective, so to speak, right? To be able to trace things. But... We don't have too much time to trace this stuff. You know, developer editions like our trailhead can only have one day data retention. So all this data here only for one day, logins, logout, all the, the stuff there. And so we can only have one day, which is not much, but enterprise unlimited performance edition organizations have free access to all this and still for one day, but we can pay more for a 30 day data retention. So depending on what kind of organization um, you are managing, is it really data sensitive? Is it very, um, you know, nobody can see way more than they should. You know, some organization is pretty open. Some is very restricted, you know. So it depends if you are managing a very sensitive um, organization data sensitive they would want to purchase this as an additional fee from Salesforce so here is an example of what you can see a number of logins you know number of logins by user whoa Adam admin login 103 times in a particular day what's going on Adam admin so you can see and on monitor things like that right so this is the use case uh, scenario to monitor data loss somebody is trying to steal the data you want to know how many people is using your custom app or you just build something and you want to know how many users actually use the the process that i just built is anybody actually using it or you want to optimize performance for example you want to know if the pages you customize loads quickly or slowly you want to know that, right? If it's slow, you want to you want you want to optimize that page to load way more quicker. And then a quick note about the API: it's it's saying that it's more of a developer um, terminology, but APIs is basically um, how Salesforce is built, right? It's all the objects are API or the fields are API accessible. You can access it from outside Salesforce, even from within Salesforce, you are actually playing around with it through the API interface, okay? So let's do the quiz together. This should be um, pretty straightforward. What event type corresponds to a user tapping an account record in the Salesforce mobile app? Mm. Mobile is using Lightning, all right? A user in your organization opens a visual force page. What is this event stored? In the event log file, we just 
discuss about that. Event monitoring can be used in which of the following scenario? Determining why certain pages are loading slowly, yes. Monitoring which IP, yes. Identifying slow performance, yes. All of the above. You are developing a new application for your org. According to Salesforce best practices, what should you consider first? The UI, user interface, how you will release the application, the underlying API, overall, of course, overall. You want everything to be good. Hopefully, we did it good on the first try. Bada bing, bada boom. Oh, wrong. Overall, user experience is wrong. Come on. You're developing a new application for your org. According to Salesforce best practice, what should you oh, consider first, right? First, maybe the UI. No? API? Ah! <laughs> now you know the right answer. So the API comes first. Maybe we skipped it. Let's go back a bit. Mm hmm. We won't go over nothing, blah, blah, blah. Here. That's why the API is so important. Salesforce encourages what's called an API first approach to development. API first means that before you develop an application user experience, you want to pay attention to the underlying API. What does that mean? The API lets you lets you use your data in ways that aren't possible in the user interface. Okay. Well, that's basically talking about this, that question. See you on the next video. Hit that subscribe button and explore new trailhead grounds and learn to implement the most useful and popular apps on the Salesforce app exchange. And do yourself a favor, like this video and you'll be surprised on how much more you understand when watching this same video after liking it. Don't take my word. Watch this one more time after you like the video and see it for yourself. Bada bing, bada boom.